Hi guys, this is me, Webs from SlideNote here. Today, I'm going to talk about how we can add action items or action icons to the toolbar, how to reuse the toolbar between two different activities, how to navigate between different activities using the up affordance or the arrow or the home button, which you call it in your app. So let's get started. So next step, let's go and add an action over here inside our toolbar so that we can click on it and go to a separate activity. The way you do that is very simple. It's just like what you did always. You simply go to your menu.xml, which is inside menu folder here and menu underscore main.xml is the file. Inside this, you simply add another item here and you have an ID for this. You can simply call it navigate title here. You can of course say string slash next something like that and of course we need to create that string so let's just close the item first here and then just hit alt enter and it's going to say create string resource value next just hit that and you can do that directly inside your strings.xml file here the resource value will be simply called next here click ok and of course this should be small completely so let's just select it shift f6 to rename it we can call it small next over here refactor and that's done the next thing that we need to do is add icons now this is where your first question is going to pop what is the size of an icon inside the toolbar that is going to work as action so unlike the previous Android versions where Google used to say do this keep this size keep that size for this keep this size for that here there's a lot more flexibility if you go to your material design specs and go to metrics and key lines there they have talked about touch target size at the bottom of the page and there they say the minimum touch target size is 48 dp keep this in mind while spacing icons and they shouldn't overlap in other words the sizes that you're supposed to keep are 18 on an mdpi 24 on hdpi which is shown here and then there is your xhdpi which is 36 and then there's xxhdpi which is your 48 in terms of size here so they say on an average 48 dp translates to physical size of 9 mm and if you design your elements to be at least 48 dp high and wide, you can ensure that your targets will never be smaller than the minimum recommended target size of 7 mm. In other words, they want things to be easily clickable. So that is very simple. You just need four different sizes of the same icon to put right. So I already have just one size here. In my case, I'm not having four different icons. So I've placed it inside the drawable folder, which is called IC underscore next dot PNG. I'll simply go here and I'll say order in category give it the number as 200 so that it comes below and then I'll say app show as action to make sure that the menu is displayed always this means it's gonna be there always on the toolbar it's not a recommended choice you're supposed to use if room in most of the cases and then of course there's the icon here here I can simply say drawable IC next over here so that takes care of putting the, that, that over there so let's see if we run the app we can see the icon or not and there's our action icon it looks a bit stretched or blurry because I did not use a proper size I said there's only one image but in your case it will look pretty good if you have four different icons of different sizes like this said over there in their documentation and of course this title color and this overflow icon color looks very stupid right now but I just kept it there so that you can see what we have done in this video so let's go further and create a new activity that's going to be launched when this is clicked over here. As you can see, you can simply access this value inside your on create options menu inside the main activity here. You can add a condition by saying if id equals equals r dot id dot oops, it's called navigate here. What we need to do is simply launch the second activity from here. Let's create that activity quickly. Go here directly to your material test you and just right click here and say new you can say activity here make it a blank activity call it sub activity and of course it's going to have its own layout which is activity underscore sub the title sub activity the menu is going to have its own menu here if you want to keep it a launcher you can select that otherwise don't simply click finish at this point and the second activity is done now if you run this at this point we can go to main activity we can create a new intent we can directly say start activity from here we can pass the intent by saying new so all it's going to take at this point is to write this inside your r.id.navigate and when you click on the icon it's going to automatically take you to the second activity. Let's see that in action. 
So at this point, it's running on both the devices. There's free lollipop. You click on the icon, you go to the second activity, just go back here. And there's of course our lollipop. You click there and it goes to the second activity and you can go back. But did you guys notice something? There is no sign of your toolbar inside the second activity. So let's see how we can add the toolbar there. It's pretty simple. You can just go here to your sub activity and all you got to do is go to its layout, which is activity underscore sub dot XML. First, let's remove this weird padding they have here, padding left, right, top. And of course, there is another one. Let's press control alt L to reformat stuff. Click run here and remove the padding here at this point. Now to include the toolbar, it's a pretty simple and straightforward thing, which is why we made it in a separate layout file in the first place. You can simply say include here. And of course you got to add the layout file here. That is the layout is at the rate layout slash app bar. And we can give it an ID saying app bar in this case as well. Here we can simply say app underscore bar here. And of course we need to close this tag properly. So let's just reformat stuff again. Control Alt L, click run. At this point, there's going to be an overlap with your toolbar and the text view here at the top. Because the root layout is a relative layout, it's going to place everything together. So simply make the text view go below the toolbar by simply specifying a constraint layout below here. You can say app bar and then the text view goes down the toolbar here. So at this point, if we are able to run this, you should be able to see the toolbar in the second activity as well. Let's see that. So there things are running for us once again. If you click next here, you're going to be taken to the toolbar. Notice there is no title, there is no action icons, no overflow icon, nothing. Because this is a completely different activity, we need to configure the toolbar here as well, which means we need to go back here inside our sub activity. We got to do the same stuff which we did earlier. We go here, we simply say toolbar, make sure it's the Android support v7 and say find view by id r.id.app bar here. And all you got to do now is simply set it to the action bar by saying set support action bar toolbar here. Now, if you run this, you will see some of the things happen. So once again stuff is running just hit next hit next and there you go take a look at that there's our sub activity in both the places with the overflow icon and stuff and because we specified the style at one place which was inside your app underscore bar dot xml the same title color the same overflow icon color are also being applied here now for the last step of this video is to make up affordance in other words the up button to make the icon clickable here the home button and go back to the main activity. Let's see how we can do that. So somewhere over here in our sub activity, we need to have some kind of icon. When we click on that, we go back to our main activity. In other words, we need to have home button over here. Let's see how we can do that with two methods. The first one that we need to call would be set home button enabled. This is going to be called on your action bar. So it says enable or disable the home button in the corner of the action bar. The other method that we need to call is set display home button enabled over here. To set display home as up enabled is going to have this boolean which says show home as up. In other words, set whether your home button should be displayed as an up affordance. Set this to true if selecting home returns up by a level. In other words, if you set it to true that's gonna go one step back to the main activity if you program it otherwise it doesn't bother anything so let's go to our android studio and simply go to our sub activity and here we can configure those two settings by first saying get support action bar here dot set home button enabled and we can simply say true to enable it same way we can say get support action bar so set display home as up enabled so it's going to display the up icon and you guys are going to see what that looks like first let's see so there's our main activity you just go to next here and if you go to next in both the places you're going to be taken to the sub activity and as you can see here this is the home button that we are talking about when you click on this you want to go back to the main activity how will you do that that has to be handled inside your sub activity inside the on options item selected in other words you simply go here to your sub activity you go down here to your on options item selected. Now this is a special case when the home button is clicked. You can simply have an if condition here by saying if all you need is the ID of the home button which is ID equals equals Android dot R dot ID dot home. So with this what you want to do is go back to your main activity and that is pretty simple. 
all you got to do right now is simply say so go here simply say nav utils which is a special class that's going to let you navigate back to your main activity you can simply say dot navigate navigate up from the same task in other words both the activities are most likely going to run inside the same task if you guys have read about tasks in android and here you can specify the source of your task which is going to be your main activity right so if you go to the documentation that is navigate up from same task it's going to ask you the source activity here and it has a note which here that says the current activity from which the user is attempting to navigate up becomes your source activity in our case then that is going to be this over here and if you go back it also says one note here it says this method should be used when the source activity and the parent are within the same task in other words in our simple example we are assuming the fact that the main activity and the sub activity are going to run in the same task if that's not the case if you're specifying a launch mode for your main activity or your sub activity then you should use the other method which says should up recreate task so let's go back here and simply have this running and see what happens so there's the next button i click on that i come to sub activity i click back here and the app is going to crash because we need to tell that the main activity is the parent activity in this application and therefore we need to go to the manifest and configure it so we can simply go here to manifest android manifest.xml here we can go to our sub activity here and we can add a meta saying that the parent of sub activity is nothing but our main activity we can specify the android name the android value here so let's see what that name is going to be the name of that meta name is meta tag is going to be android support dot parent activity in other words you're telling that the sub activity has our parent which is our main activity in other words when you click the up affordance button you should be taken from the sub activity to the main activity of course we need to pass the full package name of the main activity here inside the value and with that things should be properly configured just hit ctrl alt l to reformat stuff and let's run things so here we are back so we just hit next here on both the places we are taken to our sub activity hit back here and we are taken back to our main activity which means the up affordance using the toolbar is working so in this video we have taken a look at a lot of things about how we customize with the toolbar in the next video we'll proceed further and see how we can make stuff like navigation drawers and things which are coming up in material design in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a